we supposed to be dancing yet? Or you what? like this music, Kent? It's a little country. It's a little bit rock and roll. No? No. Hey, guys. <laughs> Kent doesn't like the music, so I'll have to kill it. Hey, guys. <laughs> welcome to the TFL Talking Trucks live show. And if you are watching this and you think that, well, we're uh, not uh, doing our usual outdoor stuff or bike testing, you are right because we are live and you may be wondering, why am I here instead of Andre, Kent? Yeah, why the hell are you here? Why no, am I this, here? We're in studio, man. We're here to, to give you all the cool facts. You know why I'm here? Because Andre and uh, Nathan are glamping. That's right. I said a glamping. Glamping. At the Overland Expo. I just saw some pictures. They've got these really luxurious tents set up, and they're enjoying oh, themselves. That's glamorous camping. That I is, get it. That is I glamorous camping. It. And today, guys, we're going to be talking about the uh, top ten. Is it ten or five? How many trucks we got? Uh, enough. Enough. The top enough. trucks that we're looking forward to driving <laughs> in the coming years. Yes, that sounds exciting. I mean, you know, there are so many new trucks coming up. You know, last year's year of the half ton. This year's a year of, I guess, the midsize and the heavy duties. Yeah, and i got to tell you, I think it's also going to be the year of the electric truck because there's a lot of electric trucks on our list. I think that's next year. You think so? <laughs> I do. I think it's coming. I don't think it's here. But I do know that, you know, a lot of the, the new Jeep Gladiators here, all these other things are here. And we're also going to be answering your truck questions. So these tend to be questions about towing, about what truck you should buy. So if you have a question for us, or actually if you have a question for Kent, uh, you know, let it write it down and um, let us answer it because uh, we've got the answers, don't we? So let's start with the top trucks that we're looking forward to driving. And number 10 on our list, I'm not going to count this down. The first one on our list, of course, is the Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel, Kent. I, the Eco Diesel has me pretty excited. I've driven the other one and I wasn't that excited, but I mean. <laughs> you, don't like, you don't like the Gladiator. Well, I do like the Gladiator. It's that smaller engine, that 3.6 that I'm not excited about. But I think I can get excited about the Eco Diesel. Yeah, it's coming in 2020, Kent, and it's got 260 horsepower and here's a big number 442 pound foot of torque now i gotta tell you uh, there's a lot of buzz around the gladiator people are like falling all over themselves to throw money at jeep i'm not sure um i'm not sure that a sixty two thousand dollar mid-size pickup truck uh is affordable of course people say that you know you can get the sport version which starts at uh, a mere thirty five thousand a mere a mere thirty five thousand but it's an expensive truck well that's the thing with that truck that's a specialty truck unique i think you know the dodge understands that or, or chrysler or whatever the new name is fca and i think they're going to make the big volume truck that dakota when it comes out i think it will come out and i think that's the one they're planning on selling a lot of i think it's more of a specialty truck they want to hit that Jeep market. Those customers that are so loyal to Jeep, they'll buy anything that they produce. And I think that that expensive Gladiator will still sell, but it's not going to sell volume numbers like uh, what other midsizes can do. That's my opinion of it. But you, know, you think about the 1500 Rams we've driven with that Eco Diesel in it, and it's not a big powerhouse in that truck, but I think it could be a powerhouse in the Gladiator. Yeah, I think you put your finger right on it. I mean, it really is a lifestyle truck, right? Yes, it <laughs> yes, is. You did. Yes. And it's not, it's not the kind of truck that uh, guys you know, probably using trucks for a living are going to be buying. No, no, I, and I think it's, you know, it's a specialty thing. And I, there's a lot of people out there that uh, they just love Jeeps. And I think there's also a following for the Dakota. So we'll see what that's like when that comes out. But, yeah, it's uh, it's a very interesting year. It's so neat to have new trucks all the time. I mean, we sometimes go through years like we if everything was a Frontier, we wouldn't have a new truck for 15 years. If everything was a Tundra, it would be 11 years. So now we've got trucks just coming out left and right, and this is exciting. It's an exciting time to be in our business. Yeah, you know, Ram V said that we just answered his question. His question was, do you think that a Ram Dodge uh, uh, will have a new Dakota? Yeah, there's, new, there's definitely yes. a new Dakota. Uh, the, uh, the guys running the company said there's one coming, and they said it definitely won't compete or will be based on the Gladiator. So yeah. nothing to do with the Gladiator, won't compete with the Gladiator. But, you know, um, the mid-sized truck market, Kent, has been red hot, and there are signs now that it's starting to slow down. We may have saturated well, the market. Yeah. I mean, with a new <laughs> Ranger, a new Jeep, you know, uh, and, and, you know, a new Colorado, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, mid-sized trucks for a while. There was really a, a horse race between, you know, just two or three trucks. I know. And it's interesting. There's that many trucks. It's kind of like vice pro, pro, people running for president now. There's a 300 of them. But it's just amazing how many mid-sized trucks there are. And, you know... This is interesting because the midsize market, everybody can compete. The Japanese truck makers, you know, like Toyota, Nissan, they can jump right in that midsize market like Toyota has proven, and they can compete there where they really struggle in the full-size truck class. 
So I think that's really cool that it's it's an open market for everybody. Hey, you got to squeeze the chicken, dude. Chris oh, Fox holy is cow. Dollar. Thank you, Chris. And Ahmed Al Amir says, "Miss you, Mr. Truck." Who? Ahmed Al Madir and Chris okay. just donated ten dollars. Cool. Squeeze well, the chicken again. Oh, holy cow! <laughs> Thank you, Chris. We're motivated now. Hey guys, by the way, uh, I'm going to make the announcement today because if you come back next week, uh, we're designing uh, special TFL uh, sweatshirts and hoodies. We're doing only a run of a hundred, uh, and we're going to be uh, using them to hopefully uh, you know promote this channel and. Uh, give you guys a unique TFL gear opportunity. So we've only had a hundred of them made. It's going to be the first run. They're really cool. They've got a TFL car and TFL truck down here. They've got oh, two yeah. little brands right here. And starting next week, if you guys don't want them, we'll have them for $99. I know it's not cheap for a sweatshirt, but keep in mind that's also going to support the channel. Yes, and we use sweatshirts up here in night in the mountains. It gets cold in Colorado. Yeah, and, and why are we selling sweatshirts in the spring? That's a good question. <laughs> but those will be available. I'm super excited. Uh, and uh, come back next week for those. So let's go to the next truck on our list. And this is a big one. We're going from the small one to the big one, Ken. The 2020 Show Chevy Silverado HD. And guess what? Andre is driving it next month in Oregon. Are you and be so there? am I. You, you betcha. Yeah, I'll I be betcha. there. And they're going to also have the three liter diesel. Yep. But this is going to be so interesting. The world's ugliest truck will be there. People can, can <laughs> say all they want about it. Is but it you, hashtag well, world's ugliest truck? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tell you what, when you get into the high country, I actually like that. That grill matches that truck. I like the high country in its new heavy duty. But it's exciting. 10 speed Allison, we've never had that before. It's got all these things. It's going to be powerful. Three 35,500 pound towing capacity. It's insane so, what we're doing. So Andre was trying to get his uh, CDL before the program. <laughs> Like I know. Did you think he did it? I don't think so, did he? No. I don't think, I mean, there's not much time. I told him, <laughs> you know, it's going to, it's, yeah, it's, it's, if you're going to do the driving test and all that, you got two weeks involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, I'm, I'm renewing mine right now. I got to get my medical done and all that stuff. It's, lot, it's complicated. So you'll be the guy driving it for us. So. You betcha. I'll so, be there. So thank you for going to that one because <laughs> Andre will not be behind the wheel, at least not pulling big weight. I'll tell him all about it as he sits there and stares out the window. And, and are, you, are you starting the tag world's ugliest truck? Is that no, <laughs> no. I, I'm just so saying that's what Jack was saying in the comments. Ah, oh, the new Silverado HD is not ugly. Well, I, I agree with you. In the high country, that one is yeah, not ugly. Yeah, the high country is a good looking truck. truck. is a little... I know. I, the plastic just doesn't work for that... that I don't know what happened to that truck, but, but I mean, I don't hate it. I'm, I've looked at it way a long time ago, and I, it's the general public is having a problem with it, so, is what I'm saying. Richard Russell just wrote, just got my Ranger. Forget the bad crap you read. It's freaking awesome. Congratulations <laughs> on your new truck, dude. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I, you like I, it. I like that new Ranger. I mean, I almost bought one. It just didn't work out tax-wise, but I, I think it's awesome. But, too, that's cool. I mean, everybody's out there enjoying their new trucks, and that's what this is all about. Everybody's out there in a buying season. It's spring. It's tax time. Get those rebates and all that stuff going and go buy your new truck it's cool you know are you still selling trucks are you what are you doing you're pushing no. new trucks here no i'm not <laughs> selling trucks i don't sell trucks <laughs> all right uh number three on our list the next one is of course uh, the ford super duty especially with the new 73 liter v8 uh, ford is updating the power stroke diesel as well will it have more torque kent than the cummins engine in the rams 8d trucks unofficially more than a thousand Foot of torque. Let, let, let me tell you all the numbers about the new Ford. Yeah, let's hear. Did the sound just go out? No, that, that's, that's what Ford has told us. So you have exactly what Ford has told us. Nothing, nothing. We know nothing. But you know, I'm mind betting on a thousand one hundred pounds pound feet of torque. That's my bet. I Ford, you cannot predict Ford. Whenever I say something, Ford actually purposely goes out of the way to change it, you, so it's not what I say. But that's just, my bet. You just know, though, that thousand pound foot. Uh, figure from Ram is just getting under Ford's skin, so you know. It's oh gonna well, be more yeah, than yeah, and, and I, I would almost guess 1,050, but that's stupid. They they would not do that little increment. 100 makes a little sense to me, so that's my guess. Uh, by the way, congratulations, congratulations, Luis Cruz. He just bought a brand new 1996 Toyota T100 for 600 bucks, dude. A that's brand a brand new T100 for 600 bucks. That's a bargain. <laughs> Those oh, T oh you, man, you know, Ken, actually, I, I was looking at a T100. It's a cool well, truck. Well, they're a balloon. They're kind of like the old Ford 150s. They yeah. had a little rounding corners, you know. Yeah, that's I, what they are. They're balloons. It's a pretty cool truck. I was I was looking at one that the guy was selling mm. it. It had like. 90,000 miles, which I thought was nothing. You better buy one. Right? That's what you do. You better go buy one of those Oh, trucks. Dan Atkinson just uh, gave oh, us five oh. bucks. He says, agree on the new Ranger. It is great. Andre should have 
studied materials handy while glamping. I agree, <laughs> you better be out there glamping and studying at the same time. Well, I tell you what, the driving test is harder than a written test. Written test, he'll breeze through that, but the driving test can get a little tricky. Well, how does it work? What do you have to do? Well, if you, I happen to have an asshole. Uh, instructor. Uh, yeah, you happen to have a, a, a tough Yeah, a real yeah. tough guy. And so he I was like the first guy he passed, I think, that year uh, I did it. But you know, he <laughs> This was in oh, oh October. <laughs> yeah, he I took a you know normal size trader, and of course you got the parallel park, you do all these things in their lot, and then they take you out on the road and they drive you through construction zones. And then you know, you, if you ever touch a curb or a line with your trader, you're you're out. You're qual disqualified immediately. So I do button wow. hooks, which means you go past the curve and shoot back in. It's a button hook, normal thing. And so he didn't disqualify me for that, but he would take off points, mm. and which is stupid. And then he would, you know, you drive by a sign. And that's a big thing about CDL. You're supposed to be watching ahead of you, everything going on. There would be a sign. Ten miles later, he'd say, "What'd that sign say?" And I go, "What? What sign?" <laughs> and that's what he was like. And it was just all that kind of nonsense the whole time. And he had me doing really weird stuff in construction zones with a trailer. So. I had to watch what I was doing, but yeah, that was the hard. I mean, the, uh, Andre's a genius. He will breeze through the written test, but he will have to actually really concentrate. And I told him, don't take a big long trailer like I did. Take a shorter trailer. You know, it's whatever you have you can bring with you. Yeah. You don't have to bring a fifty foot trailer, but yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll get him one of those like Harbor Freight's four foot trailers. Yeah, get him a four foot. <laughs> no, that's hard to back up. They pivot too fast. You got to give him a gooseneck of some kind, but get him a short gooseneck. All right. Next on our list, of course, is the Chevy Silverado GMC Sierra fifteen hundred with the Duramax. Somebody already mentioned that. Uh, what we know about the truck is that it's got two hundred and seventy seven horsepower, four hundred and eighty two pound foot of torque, according to GM's website. Ten speed automatic. Now here. Here's yes. a question, Ken. I'm asking you guys, too. Maybe you could write this in the comments. So the baby Duramax, right, is the mm -hmm. one that's the 2.4 liter that's in the midsize truck. That's what we call it. And then yeah. we, have the, we have the full-size Duramax, which is the big... So what do we call this? Well, we can't it's, call it's, it the baby. Well, it's a midsize. Well, <laughs> well, you, the, the well adolescent I, I, Duramax, I, I, I don't you know. They had, there was a baby Duramax. I think it was a 4 liter way back you know, a long time ago, but they never produced it. But they played with it. It was reverse, reverse so intake, how, how too. How do we distinguish it um, from the big one, the small one? It's an inline six. Just call it the six banger. That's a good name for it. It's a six banger. That's what they used to call them. Yeah, it's a six banger. But you know, that the, one is the, interesting. The, the six banger and smoker? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what you do. <laughs> I wanted to write that on his test. Six banger. I want a six banger. That's a Cummins is our six banger. So anyway, that puppy, you know, is going to have really good torque. I mean, it, you just know it's going to do it. But the big thing with that truck is what is the MPG? I think if that has outstanding MPG, that GM will have a home run. If it doesn't, it's you know it's almost going to be a disappointment like 2.7. 2.7, the turbo has a purpose, but it's not a powerhouse. But it's better than all the other V6s without turbos. So it's above. It's it's very good for its class. But you know we're all trying to think that those midsize are going to have all this power. And the Eco Diesel from Ram does not have superpower. Ford's three liter V6 does not have superpower. They're fine going down the road, but they're not towing machines like the heavy duties. Those things will tow fast if you want them to. Jake, Jake says call it the Dura Diesel. That's that not bad. Dura, Dura Diesel. Yeah, and then uh, well, Zeiss Spears. I think it's how you pronounce it. Eleven says the uh, middle child. Yeah. Yeah. Still not. Still not. Uh, still yeah. no, I'm not feeling it, dude. I'm well, not Dura Diesel is a good name, but I bet they have that copyright. Cause they have Duro every part they sell is a Duro something from GM. But like Kieran Steele says the Adolescent Duramax, uh, and uh, somebody's guessing fuel mileage of 25 plus, which might. Be oh, it has to be. It has yeah. to be because Ford's 25 on a four wheel drive and 30 on a two wheel drive. Yeah. Which is a pretty big gap. So if they can get. Up there to 30, because that's 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 where Eco Diesel is going to be. The Ram when it comes out, I predict that it's going to be 30 plus. That GM really needs to hit 30, and we'll find out next month. I will. Yeah. Maybe we will. No, if they yeah. tell us, we will. well, you're going to be driving it, right? Yeah. So, so you're, you and Andrea are not only driving the new um, world, you know, truck, but you're also driving <laughs> the Duramax. So yes. So you're going to be doing both of them. That's pretty. cool. Oh, it's going to be a long that's day. I, that sounds Those like a week long problem. project to me, but it's not. It's like. Yeah. One day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be exciting. All right, next on our list, Kent, uh, and this is one that we've been dying to drive since you were, what, 12? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> the new Nissan That Frontier. truck came out when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> we used to pull that by my bailers on the farm. It was a little tiny We truck. all know that Nissan is working on a replacement. The current one has been in production since 2004. <laughs> so were you 12 in 2004? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was 12 in 2004. <laughs> oh. Our producer was 12 in 2004. That is the longest running truck in existence, I think. I mean, I don't know of anything that's gone that long. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's what she said. That's what she said. I know. You know what? The reason they're not—I know he's blushing. The reason they're not uh, 
rushing, of course, to replace the Frontier is that they just keep selling them. They just keep well, selling them, selling well, them, selling well, them. Well, Ford did that. The Ranger, it was over 10 years and didn't change anything on it. So, I mean, those midsize, they get by with that because, you know, a lot of companies buy them, whatever they do with them, parts delivery and all that. So they can get by with having a truck stay in that long time. Hey. It's not as competitive as, like, say, the half-ton class. Hey, Jake said Minimax. Not bad. Minimax. We're getting Minimax. closer. We're getting yeah. closer. Yeah, that's a good one. Minimax. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. Duramid, Duramini. No, I like Minimax. I think, Jake, I think you yeah, nailed it. I, I'm feeling Minimax. Yeah, I am definitely feeling Minimax. And, of course, the Frontier, you know, I think at this point they have to replace it because uh, every other midsize truck is at least, you know, two generations younger now. Oh, yeah. Well, my goodness. Yeah, anymore, a four-year-old truck seems to be old, even though it's not. It just seems to be. Yeah, once upon a time, trucks were replaced every 10 years. Now it's every yeah. four years, yeah. except for the Nissan Frontier. Okay, and of, course, Excuse of me. course, the next one on our list is uh, the one that uh, I think all of you Toyota fans are looking forward to, the new Toyota Tundra. The current one has been in production since 2008, Ken. Does make it 11 years? Yeah, yeah, we've got some spy shots there up on the screen there, so you can kind of take a look at what's been running around out there. Yeah, I know you were off somewhere playing with bicycles, but I was at that launch when that came out in 2008, <laughs> which I think we drove in 2007. And I was in Arizona with Cactus riding horses, shooting shotguns, and driving the new Tundra. And I was weaving out of Maseratis that run away to Pebble Beach on that Silverado Highway in California. How do you go from trucks to Maseratis? You're because the only they one were on the highway, and I had the truck, and I was weaving them through them because they were putting along, not wanting to get bugs on their windows. <laughs> so I was flying around those little sports cars. But no, that truck, I was there, and, and I thought I was very impressed with it. That 430 we were in really got me excited. But you, you were probably doing Iron Man things back then, weren't you, in 2008? What Let's move doing? on, because <laughs> 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 now we have uh, our list of electric trucks because there's a, a whole batch of electric trucks coming. Uh, and these um, regular trucks, you know, we're looking at probably, like I said, either this year or next year, right? The yeah. electric trucks, that's anybody's guess. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I will, I you know, if, if all the numbers work yet, that's going to be my next truck. I'm, so, I'm excited. So perhaps the next one that you might be buying then is the one that probably isn't vaporware, but is actually the one that's probably going to get built because Amazon, I think, invested, I want to say, seven hundred million or nine hundred million dollars in the company. Yeah, seven hundred million. Seven, million. And yeah. Four, and four, invested five hundred million. Yeah, so yeah. everybody wants in that, and it's a good looking truck. That's the thing the that, that, where it beats the rest R1 of the rest T. of them. Well, I don't know what the Tesla looks like exactly, but the the Atlas, the Bollinger, some of those look like they were. You know, Lego trucks made out of Legos or something, but the the no, you're uh, skipping ahead here. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me let, me, let me let me give you the details on the Rivian <laughs> R1T. You shouldn't give me notes because I read them. <laughs> it's the world's <laughs> largest automotive battery pack with get this 7,776 individual cells. Somebody actually counted those, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a hundred and eighty <laughs> kilowatt battery, which means I just drove the new e-tron. That was a 95 kilowatt battery, so this is basically double that. And may exceed, this is crazy, 410 miles of range with the world's largest battery Well, pack. that's what they have to be. If you're going to be in a truck and if you're going to go somewhere other than just to work three miles away, you need the mileage. You need those kind of battery packs. If you're going to pull a trailer, can you imagine putting a load on that thing, what that does to those batteries? They're just going to suck the juice out of them. You need that kind of range. I mean, I can't believe they would look for anything less than that. So I, I've got some interesting news if you're into electric trucks and electric cars. I, I did some research. So I was at the e-tron, right? Uh, what, what, wait, what's an e-tron? e-tron is Audi's new electric, it's their first ever electric crossover that's all electric. Not their first, but it's the it's a big crossover electric vehicle. It has uh, 204 miles of range and it just hit the dealerships. But that's not interesting. But it, it is if you like electric <laughs> things. What's interesting about it is it will tow 4,000 pounds. And the question, really? here's the question, here's the question. If you're towing, and of course this, this varies based on how much you're towing, you know, what kind of a trailer you're towing, what kind of topography you're towing, but how much range do you lose in general when you're towing? And I actually got an answer to that question. Well, I look at gas mileage between an empty and a loaded truck. You know, it's like half. So that's what I'm going to say is half. So, yeah, so... Uh, I'm, I'm I, waiting. I got to talk to the speaker. So I, half. I say half. So I talked... I, I, I spoke with... Uh, I spoke with other journalists out there because all the electric car journalists were out there. And I asked this question because I was fascinated by it. And one said that they actually had experience with a couple that bought a Tesla Model X, which is a big crossover with, you know, the uh, Falcon Wings. Wings yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they, they bought this car and they put a, I think it was like a 3,000 pound uh, kind of little travel trailer on it, uh -huh. right? And they towed it across all of America. And their rule of thumb was, now get this, this car gets over 300 miles of range, was they would lose 0.4 or 4, 40% of the range. Uh, more so than half. A little yeah. bit more than more half. Than half yeah. yeah, so a little bit more than half. So if yeah. your range was, you know, 400, 
you'd be what's point four of that? You'd lose. <laughs> I'm awful at math, Zach. It's less than two hundred. Is that the Rivian? So you'd lose one hundred and sixty. So if the if if the Rivian actually gets four hundred, you'd only be towing two hundred and forty. Um, miles before you had to charge up again. That's right, you don't even have to right. go to the bathroom in 200 miles. Why would just stop? They charge it up. That that would not work. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. When you get the other guy's got 400 miles. Even 200 miles, if you cut that in half, is not going to be much of a of a tow test. I mean, we can make it up and down the hike, and that's about it. Anyway, think you, about that. The there, future. There you go, guys. Uh, and the other two trucks, of course, that are coming are is the Atlas and the Bollinger. Uh, and the Tesla. So uh, obviously Tesla rolled it out. They haven't provided much information about it. We know that Musk has said that it's his next priority after the Model Y. Uh, the Bollinger, uh, they, they have like one hand-built uh, prototype running around. That might be vaporware, you know, looking for an investor. And, yeah. the, and the Atlas, uh, what do you think? What about the Atlas? Well, I, I, I don't know. The, I mean, the Tesla is the only one that's got good looks like the R Riva van, Rivian. Yeah. Yeah. And the other two, to me, look like box... Legos, I, I don't know. Fair enough. Especially the Bollinger. I mean, that looks like just a giant box with some rivets in it. And so I, but you know, that's how people are. People are going to want some style. They're going to want something that looks cool. They're not going to drive a box that, you know, looks like it, you know, they got it out of a cereal box. I agree. <laughs> All right. Kent, we're at the part of the show where we answer your questions. And we've got three here from uh, different viewers. So let's start with number one, uh, Eric. Um, now he's asking about a 2019 Ram Power Wagon. Yep. Before we get to that. Yeah. Um, Joey's cleaning later say, why no love for the workhorse? Just for the sake of time, I yeah. didn't include it, but that's another one, too. Yeah, the, we, we, talk, we actually talked oh, about the workhorse yeah. in the pre-production yeah. meeting. We were just running out of time, and there's not uh, enough time in the day to get to all these questions. So, Joey, good catch, but uh, maybe next time. All right, let's keep going, Kent. We're talking a question from Eric. Today I asked the dealership about the payload and towing capacity because I think the numbers are too low for 2500 That's the Ram Power Wagon, of course. I'm wondering why you are saying that the payload is around 1,600 pounds. Well, we're not saying that, but SCA is saying that. 1,600 yes. pounds and the towing capacity is only 10,600 pounds. They told me that with the right towing package, which includes a 410 gear ratio and a 6.4 Hemi, the 2019 Power Wagon has a payload of 4,050 pounds and a towing capacity of 16,000 pounds. Ram says 1,600 pounds and a towing capacity of 10,600 pounds. So it sounds like uh, it sounds like the salesman gave you some bad news there because we're not saying that. That's what yeah, Ram is saying. Right. And that the, the question is, why is it tow so little for a heavy duty truck? Well, it's and, and it, payload. You know, okay. The, the difference with I, I group the Raptor with the Power Wagon in this category. These are sport trucks, off road trucks, trucks that are made for wheel travel. So you got lifts on them. You've got you know factory lifts. They're made to go off the ground, which means you got wheel travel. So when you have more wheel travel, you have more to compress. So if your leaf spring is here and your coil spring is here, it compresses and that's where it stays. If your if your suspension like these are made to jump and haul and fly, you got that much. So when when you get leverage on the back of that kind of a trailer with a long suspension, long travel suspension, you put a load on it, it's going to compress more, which means it's going to have that. What do I call that thing? There's this name I call the Elvis pelvis. No, it's it's called squatty, potty. When your truck squats more, it handles worse the front end floats. So that's my theory for it. Whenever you get a truck that's a specialty truck, made to off-road and with more wheel travel, you're going to have more squat and your trader will not control as well. And I think that's what they're aiming at. They know that this is not a heavy-duty truck set for trailering. What he's talking about with the 44,500 and 16,000 trailering capacity, that's like the, the leading class in the three-quarter ton with a gas engine. Yeah, so... Uh, it, but that you can't compare that to, yeah, the, a Ram, to, the, to the power wave. A Ram 2500 4x4 crew with a 6'4 box and a 410 gear ratio in the Hemi has a 3280 uh, payload and 16,900 16, towing capacity according yeah. to Ram. So and that's, that's a lot. That, that's, that's a, a for that's a gas tow, engine. Very that's much. a towing truck, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's totally different. So, so it's people, suspension. People, suspension is the number one thing, I think, is the difference. I, I think all of us want it all, right? We want it to be able to go off-road and tow as much as possible and, you know, get us laid, right? All of that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trucks do that. Cool. <laughs> they do do that. All but right. in the real world, um, you know, if, if you want to tow, then get yourself a towing truck. And yes. If you, you want to go off-road, then get yourself, you know, the power wagon. Right. Those engineers, they design things differently on purpose, and that's where these numbers come from. It's not just because they want you to tow less. It's because they don't. They know, they know the extreme uh, extremes of the truck and what it will and will not do. So, no, it's... That's very, I mean, good gosh, what's a Raptor? 8,000 pounds or some exactly crazy right. thing? 8, so, 
So that, there you have it. Yep. All right. Now, Ray wants to know about the fuel efficiency of a 2020 HD trucks towing a fifth wheel on the Ike. I see when the new 2020 truck came out, uh, you do the Ike gauntlet test at near max weight. What I would like to know is how the 2020 HD trucks will perform in real world RV towing, which with which is with uh, an 18,000 pound to 24,000 pound fifth wheel trailer. My thoughts are the results could be matched differently than the max tow test. So he doesn't want the max tow test. He wants to know how it does towing like a 18 to 24,000 pound fifth wheel trailer. Well, you know, roughly about half of the, their towing On capacity someone. these days, at least. Yeah. Well, what 2020 have we tested other than the Gladiator? He's On talking the more in the future oh, about the trucks that we will be testing. Says he so saw we'll that. So I, okay. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's and that's the whole idea of why we do the Ike is we want to see the maximum capacity of these. What they will do at the very edge, just like we have that. What's the other thing called? Guy Ike Gotland. There's the is it the Super Ike? Yeah, the Super Ike. We do all those things because we're up here at the extreme altitude and we want to test these at their extreme. I mean, think about that. If you know what it'll do when it's maxed out at the extreme. That of course it'll do much better at half that. You know, so it's 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 easy to calculate kind of what you can do. There's, he wants our best guess. So what would the performance be like towing halfish of the towing capacity? So really, like, really yeah. good. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say you know twice as good as towing the full capacity. Well, yeah, yeah, that that's the whole point. But it's it's hard for us to do a thousand tests. We do what we think will will kind of spread out. And a lot of people never get near these mountains. So yeah, it's it's kind of unfair to them. They don't know how it perform in their area, but they know it'll perform better. And that's the point. That's the point. We it, you, these trucks will perform dramatically better if you don't go as crazy as we do. That's just how it works. Yeah, and we're you know we're aware that trailers come in different shapes and sizes, that loads come in different. Yeah, a lot of different wind resistance yeah, on all so these we, trailers. We're aware, yeah. and we do our best to try to mix mix it up, and you know take the most popular kinds of trailers out there but we can't do them all you know there's everything from horse trailers to, to toy haulers to yeah, flatbed flat trailers it's, it's just, it's, yeah we can't do it all unfortunately even as much as we would want to but thanks for that question ray all right jim wants a truck recommendation kent i'm in the market for a truck that i can use to pull an rv trailer in the six to nine thousand pound range that i plan to pull two or three times a year including up and down hills the rest of the time, I'll be driving the truck normally and using it for occasional DIY projects or dump runs. Fuel mileage is important to me, and I'll find with a mid-range truck, I think he means mid-size, right? Well, does well, mid-range in terms of price. Oh, price. Right, not like yeah. Not loaded, yeah. Yeah. limited. Or oh, right. does, does not have to be luxurious. So far, my research tells me I can get away with a half-ton truck from Chevy, Ford, or Ram with a max tow package. What do you think would be the best option? Well, that's exactly true. If he's going 9,000 pounds at the maximum, that eliminates the midsize. Yes. So we are in a half ton class, and they will basically all do that with the max tow package. They'll all do that. So, and this is interesting. You know, you guys do, and I'm so happy to, that you do that MPG loop. That's a 100 mile loop with a loaded trader. Andre and I just did another one the other day. And I think that is so good because people don't know what these pull. You know, when you're loaded, you're a whole different mile per gallon game than when you're an empty truck. And that kind of tells the, 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 how things work. And so what we tested so far, you know, like my Ford F-150 and F-150s we've all tested, they did great empty. They did the best empty. But the Ram and the Chevy did better with a load. So there's a big difference. But you're only towing, you know, two to three times a year. So do you, which, what's your target? Is your target going to be better fuel mileage with a trailer or better fuel mileage empty? Your, most of your miles you're going to put on with an empty truck. So, you know, you can aim it that way. And that's why we do these tests and give our scoring. So you can take our scores and relate them to what you do in life and have something match you. So you, you can take any of those brands with a max tow package and get your goal. So I'm going to say, okay, he says, you know, there's a lot of clues here. Uh, he said uh, fuel economy is important to him. So if fuel economy is important to you, then I would say hang out. Let's see what the new Ram uh, Mini Duramax does. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fun, right? <laughs> that that could be impressive. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. that's uh, true. The Eco Diesel. Uh, what's the towing capacity on that? I want to say it's not as great. I, I'm not sure it's going to go well, to nine thousand. It, it does yeah, like eight, doesn't it? The Ram. Yeah, yeah it, doesn't, and, it doesn't do great towing. But the thing with that, yeah, it's not like a power. None of those powerhouses until you get the heavy duties. But I've got a lot of friends that have the Eco Diesel Ram 1500. Yeah, and that's almost every one of them gets 30 miles a gallon. They all very impressed with them, and I was impressed with them. So, 
But you know that's 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 going to be a big contender when the new one comes out, which is that, does that come out in 2020? The new Ram Eco Diesel. Late it's a, 2019. It's so later this year. This year. Yeah. So that will that yeah. If 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 that's your you're right, Roman. You want to wait and see how these but, come in. How the the whatever the baby Duramax mid Duramax. What, what do you call it? Mad Max Duramax? Mini Max. Mini, 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 yeah, Mini Max. <laughs> mini Max. Let's call it the Mini Max. Okay, the Mini Max. Yeah. We'll find out what that does. And, you know, I know people personally who are waiting for that truck. And I told them, wait till you get some MPG numbers before you make your decision. Because you can either be happy or sad. So, you know, that's yeah, kind of my I advice. guess the one I would take off and the diesel is a Ford diesel. I'm not sure that the half ton with the diesel and the Ford gives you all that much for well, how much more it costs, right? It's right. Four and a half thousand dollars more. And yeah. I'm not sure you get... You, you're going to save that in diesel, and you have to buy an expensive one unless you're a fleet. You can't you can't even go to XLT in a diesel on the Ford. You have to go to the Lariat and above, and I don't like that idea. But too, it's a big deal if you're Ford and you want a two wheel drive. I mean, it works pretty good, but it's a four wheel drive. It's not that impressive. Yeah, it's only a little bit better than a gas engine. So why would you do it? I mean, I, I had to make that decision myself. And you can see what I did. But anyway, I, I, I wish that I wish luck on that on with Ford. I hope that they figure something out to get better so, fuel so mileage. So I guess our recommendation is, you know, wait for the Chevy to come out, see how it does. Uh, you might want to wait for the uh, Eco Diesel to come out. And how about out of the three existing trucks, which would you get? Would you get the Ram? The Hemi is not fuel efficient. Well, it's a lot of things, but fuel efficient it is not. But it's better than a Ford Loaded. It's not better empty, but loaded it, and that's what I'm, that's the point I'm making. But is that? He's only, only towing know, like three I, times a year. I know. At that rate, go for whoever has the best gas mileage on the gas. Yeah. So at that point, I probably would eliminate the Hemi. You know, we've had experience with it, and it's not right. the most fuel efficient. So that leaves you with, obviously, the Silverado. And if you want the fuel efficient one, you're probably better off actually. Well, you get the six two or the five three. Which would you get? Or you could get the 2.7 turbo. Yeah, you could get the 2.7 turbo, but it's not going to tow uh, 9,000 pounds. It's really going to yeah, struggle with 9,000 Yeah, you're right. That's, that's very true. No, I, 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 excuse me, I have to have a hard time forcing myself away from the 6.2. And the yeah, six I'd two, I'd probably go for the six the two. The six two yeah. was a, one of the better ones loaded. Yeah, so, so six two. So me, I'm a big fan of the six so two. So Silverado six two, and then on the Ford side, you've got a whole bunch of choices. Don't yeah. do the diesel. You could do the two seven, the three five Eco Boost, well, or the, the five the, three Coyote. Yeah, the two seven. You have a hard time getting the nine thousand pounds. Right. If you do equip it right, you can get there. But get the three, get the, the three, three five, five twin yeah. turbo, ten speed, all that. Exactly. That's, that's that's how I would do it too. That's true. Well, guys, there you have it. And, Ken, thank you very much for joining us uh, on this edition of What Truck Should I Buy? Yes, it was fun. It's always it's always interesting to get in here. And, you know, like, like Andre and I have a different perspective on trucks. You have a different perspective, which is always neat to listen to. That's one of your magic things is that, you know, you would look at it as like the first time you've ever seen stuff, and you have a whole different view. And I like that. I think that's so cool. So, <laughs> Ken's, Ken's, in, in a nice way, Ken's calling me a newbie, which is fine. <laughs> I, I, I agree. You've been, you've been, you've been trucking Well, no, a lot life. of people. A lot of people are newbies, and they need to know, you know, that they're not wrong while they're trying to trying to figure these truck things out because trucks are complicated, and traders make it more complicated. Yeah, yeah, and let's kind of give them a peek as to what's coming up on uh, TFL Truck. Uh, we've done uh, the uh, we've done actually a bunch of really cool stuff. So we just towed up the Ike with the Gladiator. Uh, and so that video is coming soon, uh, so you'll be looking forward to that. Andre went down to Texas and got a whole bunch of trucks muddy, and some of those videos up are up on our new website, TFL Off-Road. So if you want uh, some muddy truck comparisons, go to TFL Off-Road. And, of course, on TFL Truck, our premier channel, uh, Kent, what have you been towing? What have you been doing? I'm driving a Blazer now because I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> no, no, no. What, what, have you, what, 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 what videos have you done that we haven't published yet? What was the last? Oh, video? last one that Andre and I did was the MPG loop uh, with... Uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, the 2.7. Yeah. Yeah, we just so, did that. So we just did an MPG loop with the uh, Ford 2.7, and the results are a little surprising, actually. Yeah, and, and every, every, everybody's been waiting for us to go test that truck, and we finally got it out there with a big load, and we had a little bit of wind. And, it was and we're going we're gonna to try to do, we're, gonna, we're getting a lot of trucks next week, and we're going to try, we're going to hit three Fords, actually. So yeah. we're going to do, uh, we're gonna try to do a Nike run if we can, squeeze it in on the 2.7. We're also getting uh, a Super Duty. And you know what else we're getting? Yes, I know. That's going to be exciting. There's a really cool truck. You want to tell them or you don't want to tell them? Oh, you can tell them. Okay, a Freightliner M2. I know Andre keeps calling it international, but it's not. It's a Freightliner M2 mid-class. It's a conversion truck, so it has these cool seats and folding couches. Does it have one of those like you know soft, cushy seats? Oh, it does. It's air yeah. ride, air, air ride. cab, yeah. air everything. And we're going to pull some goosenecks with that and maybe another truck to compare it. So we're so trying we're, to do that. So, so we're going to be doing week. the big boy trucks, so stay tuned for that. I'm certainly excited because... Uh, 
you know, I don't think I've ever even sat in one of those, let alone pulled Oh, them they're, they're fun. You saw the video of the black one pulling that one big horse trader we already did, and that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a truck like that. They're beautiful. Oh, yeah, and, and this is oh, this is man. thanks to our partners at TransWest. Yes. Uh, those guys are lending us trucks and trailers, so thank you guys. We really appreciate it if you're uh, – a fan of RVs, actually. Andre published his Winnebago. That's today, right? Yeah, that's today, uh, yeah. The horizon, there's a, there's a yeah. Winnebago Horizon RV, which cost a half a million dollars. Dude, that is a lot for a <laughs> Winnebago. Except yeah. somebody said you can get them cheaper. Now, why don't you get one of those for us? You get all these other vehicles. You got vehicles all over the place. Get us an RV. All right. Well, with that, we're going to say goodbye, <laughs> guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and, of course, real-world reviews. And you got to go to mrtruck.com. For all your truck and trailering needs. See you guys next time. Ciao. Cool. Cool. I'll put the music back on, Kent. How about that? Well, only 200 people. What is this, these people? I thought oh, that was a good show. Show. What is this?